with oh yeah no and, and and the and the and the genuinely exploitative use, which I think I'm using in a good way of the the fact that the main girl is like a school shooting survivor <laughs> yeah. and it's meant to directly compare the violent hysteria of a school shooter coming into her class and murdering all of her friends. Like right. that's that, that that's the modern version of the hysteria of the, you know, of the Texas chainsaw leather face, and then you what know, they're that kind of deal with the kids. Their commentary is they're coming in to like be these almost hippie gentrifi- gentrifiers. <laughs> Uh, yes, they're, they're supposed to be progressive gentry. <laughs> right, right. So they're still talking about like you know the, the 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 horribleness of capitalism and and property rights and blah 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 blah. Uh, and then they are still trying to going into a poor community and, and like, buying yeah. buying up all of their property that were seized by the banks and turning it into like a hub for like young rich kids to like you know go live there and hang out bring life to this place you know yeah um yeah. but let but leatherface is there and he's not having it he's there living with um his foster mom which i i, yeah. I, I don't know um <laughs> sure. they they Okay. He felt, you know, Why not? He, like he, he he lost his uh, his family, I guess, uh, over the years, and, and then now he got latched then on they, to someone else. They took the giant cannibal son, and they were like, "Yeah, just put him in a home." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it also seems See what like happens. this is a place that he's been for a very long time because they even have the like I don't know if it was you or someone else that put it in their review where they have like the uh the John Wick scene where he breaks the the wall and gets his chainsaw yeah. that he's had prepared for I don't know decades I guess, I suppose. Yeah, so I'll give um, this credit. This has legit jokes in it like that. Um, yeah, and I was surprised by them. So at first I wasn't exactly sure if they were trying to be funny. But it gets so excessive I think they are. that I think they are too. And honestly, my whole family—I I watched this when I was back in uh, in Chatham. So I was with my uh, my whole family, all my brothers and my mom and my dad. And because of the excessive, everyone was gore, laughing. Yeah, they were laughing their asses <laughs> off. Like this wasn't a thing. And, and it's even speaking to like like my dad, who doesn't really like horror movies and doesn't really like um, over the top gore and stuff. I think this was so excessive to him that even he found humor in it, which says a lot. Um, cause he was laughing just alongside us. Like this is the dumbest, most ridiculous shit I've ever seen in my life. So, um, yeah. there are elements that really work with it. I, my, for me, I get upset because it's using Texas Chainsaw Massacre as its platform to do so. And I just feel like that's really antithetical to like what the, that movie does and for it to be a direct sequel to it and do this with it feels just like you didn't understand the first one or you don't care. And you're just like, fuck it. I want to make a blood. Yeah. I, I, I think that's what some people who are, you know, taking more to the film are, are thinking is that the film just doesn't give a shit. It's doing a huge, like, cause fuck he's basically you, whatever. Jason. We're just making. Yeah. They basically just make him, him Jason, which is something a word, like a, a, a shrine to his dead mom and shit. Like it's Friday the 13th. Yeah. Like, and they use, they even use uh shots from, that I would say are from the shining where when he goes into the wall to try to get the, the chainsaw, the camera follows him as he's axing the wall. Like it's the exact right. same shot. They, they did a lot of taking from other films that I love and just kind of putting them into this crazy Texas chainsaw movie. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, we, 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 we discussed this on our Texas chainsaw three and four episode, which was that, the, there is kind of like an inherent flaw and issue with trying to mold the Toby Hooper slasher. Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe and texture and quality and, and leather face and everything that made that film unique because it came out in 1974 before the slasher boom. It's not a slasher. And right. the, uh, so trying to mold it into a slick commercial slasher like around that character, it just it, it, it kind of doesn't. It loses um, a lot from him because I understand he's like this powerful entity. Like I do, you know, I love the shot in the first one where he just grabs the girl and shuts the giant metal door. You know, that's a, it's a, it's a visual uh, representation of his power. He's a juggernaut. I, I do get that. But there's also something about him that we were heavily discussing in the, in about three and four and all of them um, that do it right. Is that he's like this unpredictable child that, that, is is kind of lonely and doesn't understand how to interact with people and gets into these kind of spastic moments where he gets kind of frustrated and 
acts out in violence because of it. And, well, and the way really that he here. shot is he he's really abstracted yes. in a lot of ways when he shot like he yep. he is inhuman. He is existential. He is, you know, there's a sheer chaos and terror to the way that, you know, he moves and the way that he's used. And yeah, just by making him a really big, strong guy with a big weapon is something that didn't work about uh, Texas Chainsaw 3 for me. That was right. a huge issue for me. And I think right. this one does it better because at least this one is the insanely fucking gory, gory <laughs> and over it's the crazy. top to the point. So th- this, I think, did work better for me than that for, for that reason. But yeah. I think that, once again, the, it is just a thing that doesn't work for me. Like the whole idea of making the conventional hybrid of doing like sort of like the sad orphan background. They tried giving Michael Myers in the sequels that they did where they're like, Mm -hmm. like at one point I was watching it with my girlfriend and there's the part where Leatherface is like holding his mom's dress. And she was like, Oh, he's sad. He misses his mom. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I was like trying to like, I guess sort of psycho analytically like explain him yeah. in that way is just, I don't know. It doesn't, it, it doesn't work for me. And I, I get that, you know, the movie is trying to throw a middle finger up at the legacy qualities of it. So maybe it just sounds like annoying fan complaining about it, but mm-hmm. I do think that if that's what the movie wanted to do, they wouldn't fucking bring up, Texas Chainsaw, the original, every fucking two seconds yeah. and say we are direct sequel to the original. Like it fucking I opens know, on a, a literal explainer of here's what happened last time on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's-